welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Hello, friends. Hello, and welcome to the fourth installment of 777, our mini healing retreat for moving forward in your life. We've been working our way up through the chakras using our healing story workbook Powerball. It's my healing story workbook. (laughs) They've channeled um, Powerball to tease out the metaphors and things we need to focus on for this healing journey. I'm here with a little clear mind kombucha, sage mint rosemary, green tea. And I channeled in a chapter of the story today to get us Get us going on working in the heart space. So if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Settle in. Um, these episodes, this mini retreat can be done um, individually. So you, there is a playlist, however, if you want to start from the beginning and start like we did down at the root chakra, working your way up to the crown, doing whatever healing or spiritual teaching, whatever the guides who overlight this mini series um, feel like is most needed by you all, the collective who is watching, then that is what is being brought forward. So settle in. So like I said, if you're joining us now, you can listen, see if you like this, and then I would encourage you to go back and start at day one. So there's playlist in YouTube and there's a playlist in Spotify. And I'm still working with the Spotify support team to upload videos, the video podcast there. I'm, I think we've almost got it, but I'm um, not sure exactly yet. So still a work in progress. So leave your cares at the door. Join me in this sacred chamber. Allow the magic that is the show and the guides that overlight this show to envelop and wrap you in their love light and light love. Inviting in the guides who overlight this show, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, the Pleiadians, and hosts of many others popping in and out throughout each episode. So I wasn't quite sure what we were going to talk about today. And even when I channeled in the chapter of Powerball, I was kind of like, nah, what? What does this have to do with the heart space? But this particular day four installment is being recorded on the Wednesday before the new moon eclipse in Taurus. On Some people it's April 30th and some people it's May the 1st. Um, I think for me here, it's April the 30th in the afternoon time. And some of the themes that are part of this new moon eclipse are going to be imprinted into this day four installment. And so regardless of when you listen to it, even if you listen to it, you know, later on in the year, it's going to be whenever you most need it is when you're going to be guided to it then um, part of what's coming up as for this eclipse is it, it really, I mean, I know every new moon is a, <laughs> is a freaking fresh start, but um, I really kind of got the message more than once that it's kind of a blank slate of what you want to manifest in your life. Many people are... I think many people are drawn to this 
episode or this mini healing retreat, the 777, are finishing up a kind of a seven year cycle of some sort of healing or manifestation, you know, working on a manifestation or working through a healing journey that has been orchestrated on your behalf, they're saying, okay, thanks, um, for the past seven years. And that's finally coming to a close. And we're supposed to celebrate because you've learned many lessons on that journey. And now you're coming up against this kind of blank slate. Like, <clears throat> if I just look personally, it's like, well, a lot of the things I wanted to manifest over the past seven years, give or take, <laughs> have manifested. Um, it's been a rocky, rough ride, though, getting there. However, um, I look at a, the kind of a list of things I wrote out seven years ago of things I wanted to do, and I would say maybe 80% of them have manifested, or 90, 80, 90, I, I don't even know if I have the actual list anymore. I just remember it in my head, like what I wrote. But, um, and so now it's kind of like, well, what do you want to do for the next, you know, part of your journey? be it seven years or longer, you know, I don't typically say that like five years from now, I'm going to be doing this, but, um, you know, thinking a little bit more long-term and of course, short-term because the new moon, you can be making, um, intentions for the next moon cycle, which would be the next, you know, 28 days or so. So let's kind of weave that into this and when do you live your greatest joy and your highest purpose? It's not a riddle question. <laughs> if you've been here, if you've been on this journey long enough, you know that you live it from your heart space. And that things that you in the past might have manifested from more of an ego or ulterior motive intentions may not still be around in your life now that you've jumped on this spiritual journey and you've learned how to open up your heart and live in your joy and live in your truth. A lot of those old things might have fallen away. Um, and so when you think now, like if you think of the more long-term manifestations you want to do, it's kind of like, well, what do I want to manifest? Well, whatever's in your heart, right? And <laughs> whatever's in your heart. And sometimes like, I don't even, when I first asked myself that question, like, well, what do I want to manifest now? I was kind of like, um, I don't really know. I'm not really sure because there's this big unknown over the next month or so about some things that you still don't know yet, which has been coming, which came up in our weekly reading. If you follow the podcast, kind of one or the show when it drops, um, our weekly reading for this week was kind of like, you've got some choices to make, but you still don't have all the answers yet. So that could be playing out here too. It's like, well, I kind of like don't know because I think there's going to be some life changing events kind of presenting themselves. So if you're beginning this new seven year cycle, maybe you're going to have like some life changing events or some crossroads moments, some choices to make present themselves and your next seven years or so, or however many years it is, you like, you can't make all those intentions yet because you haven't picked the road that you want to go down yet, the path that you want to go down yet. And I feel like for a lot of the people in this collective, uh, especially even working with like with private clients, there's like these choice points, like the spirit keeps talking about choice points coming up and there's decisions to make. And until you make those decisions, because you have free will choice, then you don't know exactly how your life plays out. So the manifestation of maybe something that you've long held in your heart could be coming true for you. It could be coming down into the physical realm. But until you choose it, choose to accept it, be it, you know, whatever it is, then the next lengthy period of your life will, could play out in one of two ways. And so the, the part now is like, well, I just want to live in my highest joy for the highest outcome of all concerned. 
Um, I just want to be like, whatever you, whatever it is for you, I just want to be happy. I want to be at peace. I want to be comfortable. I think it's higher level intentions at this point rather than more specific things. Um, so, you know, what are your spiritual truths that, you know, show up when you really think about the, how you feel about something or what you want to do? Like, do you want to feel joy? Do you want to have a job that's happy and fun and fulfilling or do you want to have a partner who you know meets you on the same level that you're on you know whatever it is that you're working with I think those are the type of of, um, intentions to be thinking about Um, we do have an altar space we drew cards on day one of this mini retreat Mm. this is tasting really good um And the and then when I come into each installment of this show, I pull a card from one of the ones that we drew, and the card we got for today is <laughs> "Get Over It," but it is kind of like magnified in a way. It's kind of like shining out at me, like "Get Over It." And so I think let's read. I do want to draw some clarifiers, but I want to read the um, the channeled chapter from Powerball. This is a book I'm still in the middle of writing, but I just started sharing it with with everybody through this mini retreat. And there's going to be some changes to how how my how I'm kind of um, packaging all of my books. So maybe um, in our weekly episode, I'll go into that and kind of share with you how you can use those on your healing journey. Well. Let's see, I gotta find it. <laughs> so when we last left our friends in Powerball in the solar plexus day three installment. Oh. Um Seth kind of tricked Grimelda Ravenclaw into coming over into the light world from the Badlands, from the dark side. (laughs) I don't know. These are all channeled. I just bring them in. Um, And, you know, I don't know what's going to happen there. But there is a kind of a hmm, understanding, some sort of thing that that is made in the badlands like if you ever leave you can't come back again so if you ever go to the light world you can't go back to the dark world it's so it's so symbolic and it's so metaphorical the way the um the personas and the guides in this story have channeled this story in and and even when i look at powerball as a whole so far because now i think we're on we're going to be reading from the latest chapter which is chapter 13 Even now, I'm kind of like, what is this book really about? I just am not so sure I understand it. It's kind of, I I don't know. But it must be about moving forward somehow. It must be about, all of my books are about choosing love over all else and, and choosing your heart and your joy over everything else. But, you know, others, I have this idea, like, you know, the other series that I write, I kind of understand, like, these are bringers of the light, and this is about doing your light work and being on your soul mission, and, but this one, I'm just kind of like, I don't know what this Powerball is all about. So let's read, because we left, so everybody's in the light world now, Hyperseth and Magdalene Ravenclaw, which is Grimelda's older sister, are in the light world, Linnaeus McGee, who is the fairy a friend of Hyperseth, the old wizard who created the Powerball. Um, he's in the light world, and so is Gromelda Ravenclaw, even though she did not really, she made that choice under kind of a magic spell. <clears throat> so this is chapter 13, <laughs> Linnaeus McGee and the Fairy Tree. And I would invite you to invite in your guides to help you um, tease out any metaphors that this chapter holds for you in relation to the intro that I just posted, you know, we just talked about with the heart space and get over it and all that, because a lot of times metaphors stand out to you that I may not bring up for the other, you know, for everybody else here that's listening. 
<clears throat> so I do find it interesting when you guys write to me and to tell me like what stood out for you and how it like stands out for you on your journey. I find it so, so kind of fun and interesting to see how these play out for other people. But okay, let me get down to this. Because even when I wrote this, I'm kind of like, what is this all about? I had to meditate on it for a little bit. Okay. Okay, just keep going. <laughs> As Grim oh my goodness. Get up, get up. As Grimelda grew increase increasingly close to the Powerball, because um, Hyper Seth lets Linus McGee have the Powerball um, in exchange for getting Grimelda out of the way so he can spend time with Magdalene and kind of um, reignite their their romance and their their counterpartship <laughs> because she doesn't remember their previous lives together and so hyper Seth just wants time alone with Magdalene so he gives away the Powerball to Linnaeus McGee and says take Grimelda with you and just show her how to use this Powerball and, and see what see what she can learn from it so she, Grimelda has been practicing with the Powerball as Grimelda grew increasingly close to the Powerball she felt something shifting inside of her it was, unbeknownst to her, using its magic to transform her. And she thinks it's only a weapon to be used at one's whim, Linnaeus thought, as he observed the transformation with his master eyes. Oh, this child has much to learn, he thought, chiding himself for ever thinking he had nothing left to teach anyone. He tired of watching the girl twirl and manipulate the Powerball's energy, knowing full well it was letting itself be used. Time for some fun, he thought, as he twirled his fairy lyre and shined up his pointed boots. He had people to see and places to visit. <clears throat> he was going to take a sabbatical and visit his old haunts at the fairy tree. After all, the sabbat wheel was turning, and he had heard there would be a great Beltane fire lit to commemorate the turning of the wheel, which Beltane is in a few days, right around the same time as the new moon. As with t at the time of this recording, or Samhain, my favorite, my favorite time um, in the Southern Hemisphere. <clears throat> Linnaeus pulled together various sundries, and certain that Grimelda wouldn't need him, left out the back way to the forest. The Forest of Light was, of course, a magical space, and it was bedazzling even to Linnaeus, who had been there many times before. Each visit, he noticed something new and different, the way the light shimmered in the branches come the dawn, and the way the fairy folk decorated even the smallest of branches with dewdrops and fairy curls. The light was especially delightful this morning as he walked a speckled pathway and marveled at the way the ground fairies had painted the walkway with tiny hearts. He felt light and free, and he heard every sound in the magical woods. Now as Linnaeus was making his way home again, on the other side of the forest, Hyperseth and Magdalene were up for a little Beltane fire of their own. Just wait, you guys, we are going to do <laughs> what journey do I have the Beltane, Beltane fire here on the show. Magdalene, over the last few months, had grown increasingly enamored with Hyperseth. Her heart space widening with each discussion of their relationship. She wanted more of him each time they had come together. And still not having consummated their love, she grew increasingly impatient to have him, all of him. Hyperseth, too, had taken great care not to rush this love, but it was his but it was only his persistence to win her heart that had allowed him to keep his distance and love her more from afar. But the time of the great fire was drawing near, and he hoped that his virility and strength were enough for her. He wanted her as well, all of her. And as such, with the time of the sun god's return and the magic of the season, he vowed that if she would have him, they could make this relationship more permanent. He was following his heart for the first time in a long time. The vestiges of old pain and hurts stripped away by the healing of their love. Linnaeus danced and prattled along, and then something caught his eye up ahead. It was a fox, and it seemed to be beckoning him forward. The fox started in and around the trees, leading him, he thought, closer to something that was glowing up ahead. The fox stopped at the trunk of a tree so gnarled and twisted it looked like a dragon. 
The fox darted off, and in its place stood a beautiful fairy woman, almost twice Linnaeus's size. But he knew that woman anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to laugh again. <laughs> well, I'll be darned and spit out to dry, Linnaeus said in a way that few others could understand. <laughs> and the fairy woman, Listania, picked him up and enveloped him in a great bear hug. You're home, you're actually home, Listania cried tears of gold. I've missed you, old man. The two embraced as smaller fairies and sprites came from their hiding spots to celebrate the reunion. Oh, it would be a great time around the fire this season, Linnaeus thought, as all ideas and notions of ever leaving this place, due to the intense fairy magic and spell, word, spell work done to conceal it, filled his soul. All oh, those fairies <clears throat> pulling you in. Okay, and I have to say that I did dream about fairies last night. Not like, it was very interesting. I'll have to share that in a minute. All thoughts of Grimelda Ravenclaw and the Powerball far, were far out of his consciousness as the fairy world pulled him in. Grimelda sat perplexed. She could feel someone trying to reach her. She set the Powerball down as it grimaced. It knew that something was up. But maybe it would let this something play out. Maybe it would wait and see what was coming. This dang Powerball is <laughs> what is perplexing me. Grimelda positioned herself at the top of a great magnolia tree. She could hear it and sense it all at the same time. Grimelda, a voice whispered in her mind. Grimelda, it's me. Who's me? She pinged back with her mind. It's your father. I'm coming to take you home. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I even had to go back. I don't remember, but I thought Grimelda's parents gave her away. So we haven't heard anything really about the father really at all in the book except that she had been brought to the Castle Dragonshire when she was very young. Meglin's father had remarried and half-sister Grimelda was born shortly thereafter and spirited away to the castle when her dragon maiden had noticed, when her dragon maiden had noticed the mark of Katana on her shoulder. So the mother had died the father remarried and had Grimelda and they noticed she had this special mark of katana on her shoulder and they had taken her away to the castle Dragonshire and we never hear about the father again after that. So suddenly the father's showing up and saying, um, Grimelda, I'm coming to get you. So I don't know where that's going. But I did kind of sit with this for a little bit because I'm like, what does this have to do with a heart space? Like, what? And then kind of the deeper metaphor underlying all of it for me was like everybody in this chapter is kind of living in their heart space. So obviously Hyper Seth and, and Megalyn are. That's, <laughs> that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty like front and center. I think... Linnaeus McGee is when he decides to go to the fairy tree and hang out with his family because he's these fairy, these fair, his family. And so he's like, oh, Grimelda, she can handle herself. And he kind of just follows his heart, kind of like I would love to do, like, oh, just step out on this path. And he's just being led by the spirits of the forest. And he just ends up at this fairy tree and he lets the magic of the of the fairy lands to just envelop him and just pull him in. And we've had, oh, that gives me so many chills. Because we've had that happen before in another book. That happened in Chaga and Chai, which is part of my Soulmate series, where um, our main character, Billy Tavish, almost gets pulled into the fairy world by just some very enchanting fae who is enchanted with him too. And somehow he's able to overcome the enchantment spell and kind of pull himself back into reality. But Linnaeus being of the fairy realm is not, you know, he kind of understands how it works, but he just follows his heart and he lets himself kind of go back and he's going to have like this good old family fun time around the Beltane fires. And then Grimelda, 
I don't know. I, I, like, I don't think she's necessarily following her heart, playing with the Powerball. I think she's just kind of, and maybe she is learning how to use her own energy, learning how to build her skills. Maybe that is part of what's in her heart. It, what we know from before she popped over from the light world, like what was in her heart, when, and she was being manipulated by dark forces, but what was in her heart then was kind of like, I'm conquering the Powerball. I want it all for myself. And so it's interesting to see now that she's kind of slipped the grip, ooh, slipped the grip of the Badlands, like where does her heart lie? Um, she thought she loved Hyperseth, um, but maybe all of that was just dark clouds kind of like clouding her judgment and clouding what's really in her heart. And so I did not channel the next chapter in after this one where the dad says, I'm coming to get you. So I, I don't know. We still don't know what the Mark of Katana means, what it does, what it signifies. And so I think that has yet to play out. But the big lesson here is not so much a healing, like I think in a, some of the other days we've done some healing. <clears throat> Apparently little bugs like my drink too. <laughs> They're kind of like a little bug flying in my drink. Yeah, okay, let me, before I grab some, I'm gonna grab my Bubble Bubble deck in celebration of Beltane slash Samhain. Um, that deck is very autumnal for me. And so I want to draw some clarifiers for this Get Over It card. But yeah, I dreamt about the about fairies last night, but they were, they just looked like you and me. Okay. There, maybe there's some metaphors here. They're having me bring up this dream, but they just looked like you and me, but they lived like in this like really fancy condo complex. It was very weird. It was very weird. And they were very kind of persnickety like, Oh, we're so good. And you're, you're not a fair, you're not a fae. So you, it was very like, um, I know it was an alternate universe kind of thing, but it was very like um, class kind of oriented. Like we're the, <laughs> what the heck am I trying to say? Like we're the rich kids and you're from the other side of the track and you're no good. It was kind of like that. It was like I entered this place where there was all sorts of weird stuff going on. But when I walked into this condo complex, it was very ritzy and very fancy. Um, like high rise building and they were all dressed like, you know, with sparkly jewels and have, you know, everything was just like white and sparkly and beautiful. And I apparently I was looking for the restroom. I don't know how that has to do with anything. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, they were very like, oh, you're not from around here. You know, how dare you step into our building and look around? It was very strange. Um, but yeah, it was definitely fairies because it was called something like Fairy World. The, the name of the apartments had, was, had the word fairy in it, like fairy spirit, something or another. It was very strange. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, who knows what happens in dream time? <laughs> Still a mystery. All right, I'm going to grab this bubble bubble deck. Let me check how long I've been prattling on here. 28 minutes. Yeah. So I want to see if there's any other messages that come out from this get over it because I have been, um, I have been getting messages a lot from spirit and I'm being reinforced through discussions I've been having with other people and stuff too, like about enjoying what's in front of you and kind of not worrying so much about the other things that aren't necessarily, you know, I don't want to say manifesting, but you think, so we've been talking on the show a lot about different levels of truth, right? So you think that kind of at the lower level of truth, like the 3D level of truth, like, oh, these, some of these things aren't working out for me. Oh, darn. Like, and it kind of clouds your day a little bit and you focus a lot on the things you like just in general, us, me too, I do it too, focus on the things that aren't working out and kind of then tend to, then it kind of clouds the magic of you being able to see all the things that really are working out, all the things that are going well. And again, going back to like, you know, can you trust that 
spirit's got your back. It's such a big trust. I, this physical and 3D life is such a big trust exercise. And some people are, you know, have mastered it better than others. And I think everyone's at different levels of it. And I think I find for myself now it like comes and goes like some days. I'm getting really good at like most days being completely right on there and other days like not. So it kind of comes and goes. But somehow with the astrology playing out this year, this 2022, um, and this seven year cycle, it's just like magic, a magical transformation for so many people. And it's going to happen incrementally. They're not, a lot of you aren't just going to be smacked in the face. <laughs> They're saying some of you are. Some of you are going to be like handed a whole new life on a platter and just kind of being said, you know, like, well, this is what you asked for. Now, you know, it's up to you to figure it all out. And I saw that this morning too. I was drawing cards for myself from Labyrinth of Dragonshire and my handmade deck. And there's a blank card case in there. So I just have the little drawings like slipped into like plastic little card holder things. And I always forget there's a blank one in the deck. And I drew the blank one this morning. And, and it was just confirmation of spirit saying like, well, you can make it whatever you want it to be. It's you're the master craftsman. You're the creator. You're, you know, the soul. And you can create what you want in this realm within reason, obviously, and along the lines of your integrity. And if it fits with your soul path and your journey, then you basically, like Marnie says in Halloween Town, like you just think of what you want and you let yourself have it. And that's part of the, oh, I got chills. And that's part of the magic there. So let me just, I've got Bumble Bumble deck. And I'm going to draw whatever cards want to come out that add to this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Oh, there's one more. I'm just going to grab anything that's sticking out. That's all they're saying. Okay. And I'm going to go to the bottom of the deck. And I'm going to pull this last one. Okay. So I've got four cards. So the first one that came out, it just pretty much jumped out, was the card Witch. It's time for you to work your magic. So your magic, who are you as a soul? Who are you? Why are you here? You're a master manifester. You're a creator. Like this is who you are at a soul level. This is part of your angelic human template, a blueprint. This is what your design, what your avatar, what your soul, what your soul's presence in this lifetime and in this <clears throat> space time that's what you're designed to do and you can do it under the guise of whoever you want to be you want to be a witch do you want to be a warlock do you want to be a star seed do you want to be a twin flame or whatever you want to call it soul flame or blu-ray or whatever it's time for you to to step up and you're being more and more the more portals and the more gate work that's done on the planet by our great keepers and gatekeepers to up the frequency of the planet the more you have access to some of your hidden powers. Um, uh, today I was like sitting there with this fork from my breakfast. I'm like, I know I can make this damn thing move. And it's kind of like, come on, you know, why can't you let me just have that? And it's like, okay, but you can have that. You can have the power to um, move things and levitate things, so to speak. It's not really, it's not so much levitation because I think levitation people like me floating more. But you can have the power to move things, but you have to start like baby steps. You have to really be in your integrity because that's a big power to give to give someone, you know, the, the ability to move things. Um, and you have to like start really small, and you have to practice and practice and keep practicing. Um, so, you know, if you want, I don't know why I wanted to move the fork so badly. I was like, yeah, why do I even want this superpower? Like, what am I going to do with it? I guess I could make my house clean itself. That's probably what I would do with it. I would make my house clean itself. Like, um, oh, the movie I want to see with the Fantastic Beasts where, is it the first one where I don't even remember her name, but she has that house, you know, everything's cooking itself and cleaning itself. Oh, I like that. 
All right, the next card out was make your home into a sacred sanctuary. What does that have to do with get over it? Mm. Well, make your home into a sacred sanctuary, and it's a picture of a castle. I think this is this is also something like just to help you brighten your mood, um, especially <clears throat> with this so much newness coming in this month of May coming up here, 2022, or whenever you hear this, it doesn't matter. A lot of newness coming in for you, and how can you prepare for that? Um, I just get intuitively moved sometimes to like tidy up or... I love rearranging my house and like taking things from one room and making them something else in another room and just guided to like make things look really nice. And so it feels comfy and magical and warm and, and inviting. And then that helps you, you know, just like we talked about where are you maybe not noticing what's working versus noticing too much about what's not working, which is, such a human, like 3D egoic thing, right? It's like your boss. Where do I go with this job? But like, you you have you have a job, and your boss only gives you feedback on stuff you're not doing well. But and it's one little tiny thing that you did. But all the great other things you did just seem to kind of get overlooked. It's kind of that mentality. <clears throat> so focusing on your home, and these are also things you can control. So you can't control divine timing. You can't control other people's free will choice. You can't control the, as much as I want to, you can't control the weather. Uh, sometimes it has worked a little tiny bit though, but you can't control the weather. Um, you can't, you know, there's so many, th you can't control the political scene and all the 3D crap that you probably don't want to be part of anyway. If you're living high by, you know, you know some of that you kind of rise above. And so what you can control, okay, you can work, you can control working your own magic, making your home into a sacred sanctuary, something comfortable and fun and inviting and magical. The next card, this was on the bottom of the deck. It's a graveyard and it says, what do, what's done is done. Bring yourself back to the present moment. So this is something else you can control. The backwards <clears throat> should haves and would haves and what ifs and all that, like, you can't change the past. It's already happened. Um, do what you can to clear those thought forms. And for me now, um, what works is when some of those thought forms come up again, they're, maybe they're still stuck in a chakra somewhere and they come present themselves to me. If I don't like them anymore, I just disintegrate them right then and there. I just say disintegrate, 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 cut, 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 <laughs> or what, you know, disintegrate that thought form because it is like a little cloud or you know a little energy thing in your field and a lot of times they live really deep in the chakra system and at certain times they just present themselves to you it could be you know it's time to get rid of it once and for all especially around big gates and portals and you know, we've got Beltane, Samhain here, right, sitting right on top of a eclipse. And so things have been coming up for people. You guys have been sharing with me offline, like all this crap's been coming up with for me to deal with. And I do feel that too myself, like, okay, here's all this junk you need to like heal and transmute before the month begins so that you can get your, you can have your fresh start from the highest timeline and highest trajectory and highest vibration that you possibly can. Now, don't go all like, <laughs> what is the word? Why are they giving me this? Like, they're saying, don't go all commando and like, try to go in and like, pull up all sorts of stuff. Like, whatever just easily presents itself to you and shows up in your field, um, find a way to transmute that. You have control over that. And then the last one I think is believing in the magic and you can continue to believe in the magic, in the things that are seen and unseen, in whatever kind of is fun for you. Like, okay, some people 
you know, hang out with vampire, you know, like vampires, not energy vampires, but like vampires and wolfman and ghosts. And it's just fun, right? Or the fairies or the elves or the leprechauns or whatever, like continuing to believe in those things because in the energy world, they all do exist. And so that can help you um, get over it is to take a little sabbatical yourself and go spend some time in the spirit world, be it through a journey or maybe a magical afternoon in the forest or a day at the beach and hang out with the merfolk or whatever, like continuing to believe in magic. The last card that I pulled for, from this was called Salivate. And it says the wolf couldn't stop looking at Marla and every ounce of his strength was keeping him from lunging forward and grabbing her in his arms. Marla, however, was not interested in such things and no wolf man or other creature was going to keep her from her intended goals. So there's double message there. It's kind of like, don't let anything stand in your way of what you know you can accomplish and what you're capable of and what your heart's desires are. That's the thing too. Like, don't let anyone tell you that what your your heart desires, like that you can't have that or that it's not meant for you because you know, you know. And... There's also some fun in here in this card too about, like I said, this card particularly is like a wolf man kind of stalking, <laughs> stalking her. And it doesn't seem ill-intended because it says in every ounce of his strength was keeping him from lunging forward and grabbing her in his arms and salivate. Like, and just see like this wolf shapeshifter. We've got a lot of wolf shapeshifters in this community, but I see like this wolf shapeshifter, like watching Marla, like what, I don't know what those stories are. Oh, what was it called? Come on, you guys. I can't remember it. It's not sparkle. You just know how to get out. Where this wolf, the boy turned wolf would watch the, lo the little girl and the young girl from the woods and just would always watch her and watch her and watch her and watch her. Um, and had this great, like, intense love desire for her. And then finally one day they did meet. Oh, I have to remember the name of these books. Um, but that's kind of what this reminds me of, too. Like, there's some magic just beyond the tree line waiting for you to come play with it. If you so desire. And that might help you get over a little bit, too. Is take your mind off of, off of normal 3D, 3D life things and just let yourself be transported away to a magical afternoon with, you know, whoever you like to play with. I think if some wolf man slash boy or whatever, wolf person, wolf shifter showed up at the edge of my forest, I would definitely be like, um, I'll be right back. <laughs> all right, you guys. So I think this is all we have for this day four. I'm going to leave this here. The next time we show up here, we'll be working with day five and the throat chakra. And the next time I see you on the show, we will be doing, I haven't decided yet, we'll either be doing a bonus, something for the new moon eclipse and Beltane. Um, and then I'll see you on the weekly um, up energy update. So thank you all so much for joining me here. Take care. This episode has been brought to you by Rockaway Point's newest veterinary clinic, Posh Pets. Clark Witherspoon and his familiar poodles are here to help you with all your healing needs. Be it a toenail trim or a hairball tummy trouble healing session, we have everything you need at Posh Pets.